Um, you know, I just want to start out by by saying, you know, this is a, a really super exciting day. Um, I want to give a little bit of history here. I remember the moment that, that Krista brought up this idea to Todd and I um, as an EWD proposal. It was kind of in the early days of Biomade. And you know, we, we were collaborating on you know, how we could make a uh, you know, seek screen uh, and you know, the, this sequence screening um, more accessible and applicable to industry. And so the Biomade opportunity was, was awesome. Um, and, you know, and its plans started then, and I really appreciate the support of Biomade along the way. Um, Krista and the, you know, the SIG side team have done a stellar job leading it, um, thanks to, you know, all of the, the uh, signature side folks and the Rice team and um, Kevin um, stepping up with, with Acclid for the industry role. Um, and yeah, for everyone who's here. Okay, so once you start naming names, <laughs> it's everybody. Um, and I will um, you know, start out here with a quick introduction. I'm trying to get a laser pointer up here. Um, changing my view, sorry for the little delays here um, that I may need. So yeah, there's a lot on this slide. <laughs> quick overview of, of Biomade. It's a bioindustrial manufacturing um, ecosystem. And, and really we're bringing together a diverse range of member organizations, industry, academia, nonprofits, uh, and, and that we're all working together with government to uh, ensure, sorry, I'm still trying to get my laser to, to, to kind of start up here, but maybe that's not going to happen. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, and, and really, so we're working together to, to bridge this gap between the, the lab scale research and at scale manufacturing. So, you know, we want to, you know, let's bring bio-based products into everyday use to help solve problems. Let's you know, act now all towards securing America's future through innovation, education, and collaboration. Um, and the mission also includes uh, ensuring America's future through, in a, uh, or, uh, sorry, ensuring that the biomanufacturing workforce of the future is prepared and inspired and, and ready to fill the new jobs. Um, so the vision is to build a sustainable um, U.S. end-to-end -end bioindustrial manufacturing ecosystem that will benefit all Americans. Um, some logistics, uh, it's a public-private partnership launched in 2021, catalyzed and sponsored by the, the DOD, and it's one of the 16 Manufacturing USA Innovation Institutes, um, Manufacturing USA. So there's almost 200 member organizations now across the U.S., and, and really we're propelling new biotechnology products from the laboratory to the everyday safe, sustainable solutions for everybody. Okay, so what do we mean by bioindustrial manufacturing or sometimes just biomanufacturing? So really we're, we're using biology to solve problems and, and fill needs. So living organisms can be coaxed to make new products that are sustainable and environmentally friendly, and they can be used by all Americans. So equity is important. Um, biomanufacturing is key to advancing the, the bioeconomy, which is uh, forecast to be up to four trillion a year within 10 to 20 years, and numbers may, may be updated now. Um, so the bio-based products that will help keep supply chain resilience, counter carbon emission impacts on our environment, protect the health of everyone. And the range of applications is, is really uh, huge, limited by imagination, really. Products that members of the ecosystem are working together now to manufacture clothing, bioplastics, skincare, concrete, sustainable aviation fluid. So it's really, it's amazing what you can do when, when folks join forces, work together. Um, okay, so the Biomade approach and the source of, of the, the, the acronym, um, the, and the, really the manipulate, accumulate, do risk, and execute are the four areas of action to bridge this gap from lab to real use. Um, I won't talk through the, those four areas in detail, um, but I, I want to point out, you know, that really why we're focusing in that that mid range. So there's been billions of federal investment, careers, and, and tremendous and ingen genius efforts um, in R and D for biotechnology the last, you know, 10, 20, you know, three decades really. But it's this uh, innovation about technology hasn't been able to. You know, always get past this scale up to get to the commercial um, readiness and, and into the hands of, of users. And so it's called the, the valley of death. Um, and that's where, where Biomate is really focusing. Um, and we're calling it, it's in small letters here, you may not see the, the 
biomanufacturing readiness levels that correlate with the technology readiness levels, TRLs, that some of you may be familiar with. Um, and a paper uh, produced by the Biomay team with considerable input from members um, describes these, these bio MRLs. Um, but we don't work in a vacuum. Um, so, you know, especially, you know, for biosecurity and, and other um, components of 4S, which I'll explain here in a bit, um, it, we, we, we must continue you consider this entire um, manufacturing life cycle and transparency and communication so that we're all driving to the end goal of a safe and secure bioeconomy. Um, and so we have at Biomade three um, interconnected focal areas. Um, the technology and innovation, which is the largest group, it's driving the advancements, it's helping realize the potential of that bio, the biotechnology innovation. And then the education and workforce development is ensuring that we have the people, the resources as we scale up fast across the United States, and these opportunities are available for all. And then the four S's, um, which is safety, security, sustainability, and social responsibility, uh, really, they underlie all the activities and pursuits of the Biomade ecosystem. And this course, this in biosecurity training, um, it really helps meet the goal of all three areas. And it's also relevant across all the MRLs as it was shown on the previous slide. Um, and so I, I will briefly describe just a brief overview of the three areas and then highlight the relevance of biosecurity sequence screening. Um, so the, you know, there's more information on website and other um, presentations about Biomade into the activities of the different areas. Um, and so technolo technology and innovation, in a nutshell, it, it reduces the barriers to scale up and commercialization, and it strengthens the, the mid MRLs, as I mentioned, um, through these, you know, these major focal areas. And, and really, you know, I won't talk through all of them, is point out that they all involve or impact it somehow by micro manipulation or evolution, really at some levels. So you know, what we wanna think about with sequence screening, you know, through genetic change, um, or, you know, at some sequence level. So mindfulness of what we are producing, what are the interme intermediates and the products, what are they capable of doing uh, is the relevance there. And um, so education and workforce development, Kristen uh, mentioned she's with this group and, and this, is, this is the group that um, this project um, is sponsoring this project. Um, and, and we all recognize that the rapid advancement of biomanufacturing, it's, it's opening up, you know, the need for, inspired, trained, uh, prepared workforce, you know, leveraging, you know, the, all the talent and, and um, individuals across the country. Um, and Biomade is building the workforce of the future, you know, through creative, inclusive partnerships. Uh, and the three areas here, which is, of course, is relevant to all of them, the career, career awareness, and that includes career, careers in biosecurity and biosafety, uh, innovative education, professional development, um, and biosecurity is, is really important for, for all of these, and the course fits into all three. Um, and so this brings us to um, this, this area, third area, um, which is what I direct, I'm very proud, um, to be a part of the, the 4S program. Um, in, in, in the objective, if I can, in a nutshell, um, it's really the 4S is building mechanisms and partnerships to enable the, the entire bioindustrial ecosystem and beyond to embrace and integrate safety, security, sustainability, and social responsibility into all biomanufacturing pursuits. And we have three areas of action to highlight here, kind of in what, what we're building and, and doing. and. Um, along with the Biomade team and the members, we're um, integrating the 4S into all projects and activities, which involves member engagement and empowerment, uh, providing resources um, such as this course, um, developing frameworks um, and guidelines to support 4S for the members, and then public engagement um, and communication pathways. It is, we don't stay within Biomade, involving every, everyone um, to a communication um, and also interacting with regulatory um, agencies. And you know, we're grateful that, that Matt Sharkey is here today. Um, and, and, and more about that later. So the forest landscape here on the bottom, it, it covers a lot of ground. Um, and this course really supports all of these areas. You know, briefly, the, this, the safety and security, and it's clear why biosecurity sequence 
screening is, is um, important to block bio-risk scenarios, protect against harm for people. Um, and but sustainability, you know, it's, it means we protect against harm to the environment um, also. And we need to ensure and demonstrate the safety of bioproducts so that biomanufacturing is understood and accepted by consumers for the economic sustainability. And then social responsibility is, is broad. It doesn't fit in a box. Um, but learning and sharing tools to empower responsible use of our technology um, is here, including in adherence to regulatory guidelines and best practices. Um, and also point out that, that Matt Sharkey has been responsive and forward thinking um, towards biosecurity um, as you know, biotechnology is evolving. Uh, okay, so I wanted to, you know, zoned in on biosecurity. You know, what does this mean? And in high level definition, um, there's many variations out there, but it, it, it includes measures to protect humans, animals, plants, and other living organisms from potential harm from a biological agent. In other words, biosecurity manages and guards against bio risk. Well, what do we mean by bio risk? Um, and so the, at a basic level, a bio risk scenario carries potential harm caused by a bio agent. And we have lists of known bio risk causing bugs and harmful biomolecules, namely toxins. These are just a few example pictures here. Um, but we must consider no novel organisms um, or products that we haven't seen before. They might arise from natural sources, which we're profoundly aware, or engineered source sources. And it's this novel bio risk from engineered sources that were especially important. Um, to bioengineered technologies. And, and so in order to be responsible, bio, responsible biosecurity uh, really ought to address two key questions. And I have them here and I'm gonna elaborate a little bit on them. Um, the first one is, you know, where does the bio risk come from? And there's really two, two main um, ways and deliberate or accidental, or we could say mischief or mistake, or another word, heard the word bioterror already, uh, bioterror or bio error. And in biomanufacturing, where you know the, the risk of nefarious intent is not, we, we don't think of that, that being large, we're all working towards a common goal. Plus, we're not working with pathogens typically, it's benign organisms. So, you know, this accidental creation of a bio risk is, is important. We we need to consider all sources. And then that second bullet is really, you know, what we're doing. We need to be able to uh, identify the bio risk and you know what does it look like and that can be a moving target because science is is moving fast and you know biosecurity must keep pace um, so we'll be addressing that also uh, as we go forward and so this question of how do we recognize bio risk um, I, I like to <laughs> highlight a, a study that was done it's still very relevant back in um, 2018 some of you may have been involved in this um, and it, it's a uh, from the National Academy of Science Committee, and um, it was 2018. They laid out a process for evaluating bio risk potential in new synbiotechnologies, uh, biodefense, and the age of synthetic biology. And it provided a you know an often cited framework for uh, risk assessment, and it, it, including. Um, various means of bioengineering and genome engineering. Um, the report highlighted drawbacks in the, the current bad pathogen, bad gene-based um, risk assessment. Um, and if we hear, hear more today from Gene that risks are not only related to pathogens, we need to consider the functional phenotypes that may be harmful. Um, I'm thinking ahead to what, what Gene is presenting. So um, you can look forward to that. It, but this is a, you know, it's a daunting task. Um, and, and you know, so we look to the community for help with that. Um, so to assess bio risk, it's you know we really need to consider what can an organism do. Um, that may be more important than what it is. And I also want to mention just uh, last week I saw a, a paper that is kind of building from this framework: um, safety by design, biosafety and biosecurity in the age of synthetic genomics. Um, and let's see, James is one of the co-authors on here. Uh, and there may be others here too, but we're involved in that. Um, Seek screen is mentioned as well as the guidelines we'll hear about from, from Matt later. Um, so, so yeah, it's very, it's still very timely and relevant. 
Um, and also very recent, um, I want to highlight you know, exciting news last week, announcements um, by the Biden-Harris administration during the, the presidential forum on advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing innovation. It was last Wednesday. I think we all recall the, the executive order on advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing innovation for a sustainable, safe, and secure American bioeconomy that was uh, last fall. Um, it was also the day that this project was announced um, in September. But it, it, so this is an all of government, all of country um, approach to really ensure biomanufacturing. It, it is the, the, the way of the future to, to meet, um, solving you know, many of our problems. Um, and last week marked the, the, the uh, release of the strategies of the, the agencies, this all of government um, approach to, to fulfill the executive order. And in that, to the point of this slide, priorities related to safety, security, sustainability, societal impact, and responsible use of our technology, they came up often. And, and they're highlighted in the report document, um, Bold Goals for U.S. Bi Biotechnology and Biomanufacturing. Um, and so biosafety, biosecurity were addressed by all the agencies. Um, education and workforce development came up. And, and I just want a couple quotes I wanted to pull out that really highlights the, the um, importance of, of sequence screening. Um, biologic materials and systems will be used in new ways while being engineered to bake both new and familiar products. Biosafety and biosecurity should be included in these new technologies and processes early in the design phase. Um, and then another one, mitigating the risks of accidental or purposeful design or release of harmful organisms requires an ex uh, expanded evidentiary basis to enable the prediction of biosafety risks of any synthetic sequence part or organism. So there's a tangible action to screen for predicted functions and, and, or, and, and pathogens and that we should look um, at closer at what we're finding. Um, so there's going to be a more detailed plan for strengthening innovating biosafety and biosecurity um, that will be forthcoming. And lastly, last point here, the collaborative spirit and strength of biomade ecosystem was highlighted um, in the announcements last week. So we have important work to do. Um, okay, so uh, where is bioengineering occurring in biotechnology and biomanufacturing and, and where are the opportunities um, for sequence screening is really what I wanted to highlight here. Um, and so on the, on the left are some of the application areas of bioengineering. Um, and you kind of think about, you know, this, I won't read through all of them, but sequence, um, bioengineering as sequence is involved or impacted by these different applications, strain engineering in particular, metagenomic sequence. Um, Analysis, bioprospecting, uh, foreshadowing of what is coming today, um, and, and other protein engineering, uh, and then in, in towards some of the products of, of biomanufacturing, um, the strains themselves. Um, I'll point out how oligonucleotides and CRISPR involves repair templates, which may be benign sequence, but it may have an insert of a foreign sequence. And so, you know, what what could that do to the organism? These are all important, and and then some others that are not represented here where functional screening play a role and you know, uh, biosurveillance or you know looking for contamination in biofermenters and, and so on. Um, so you can be thinking about all the different parts of the workflow through the MRLs where uh, it, it'll be important to um, seek, do, carry out sequence screening. All right, so moving on. Um, I wanted to you know, look closer or, and highlight SeekScreen, which is the open source tool that we'll learn today. Um, some of the value to industry. Um, the, the, well, well, first, I, I'll highlight um, this, I'm sure will come up later, that it was um, supported initially by IARPA, the um, Intelligence Advanced Research Projects Activity and the Functional Genomics Characterization and Threat analysis, analysis of threats um, program, um, really towards the biosecurity, bio-risk prediction um, purpose. Um, and so it can be used you know, to help demonstrate safety of bioengineered products, to help meet regulatory guidance criteria, because it does look for against the controlled agents, which you'll hear more too. Um, but it, it, and it will also, the potential bio-risk sequences was the goal you know, towards biosecurity, but it will also help predict biological function um, so the use of the PFAM and gene ontology terms that you'll know, be hearing about, these are important for all, you know, beyond just um, biosecurity, for, for all bioengineering to advance. 
um, the product development, and then the, some of the practical attributes, the ability to, to screen hundreds of thousands of sequences in parallel, um, variety of sequence inputs, which will be seen in the case studies today, can be downloaded accessible to um, any researcher because we'll all do it here. And uh, I think the minimal cost being open source, that's that's a, a huge asset. Um, and, and that's because that is a barrier for biosecurity in the industry is, is cost. Um, and so, yeah, the biome is important. Um, all right, so my final slide, I'm probably getting close to time here too. I, I wanna end by, by emphasizing that you know, biosecurity is a shared responsibility. Biomade is built on collaboration, uh, transparency, working together. Let's bring all stakeholders to the discussions and, and to the work and, and all the advancements. Um, you know, in the training and, and enabling uh, bioengineers um, to take ownership of the safety of the engineered molecules they're producing and to work together to, to help you know, to share insights and, um, and strategies. Um, and, and so that's why you know, this is so valuable that we're all together here today for this. And, and that sequence screening needs to be considered you know, that all part, uh, components of the workflow in biomanufacturing. Um, starting with the early research and development. Um, and, and Biomade is, it, it's building and empowering the workforce of the future. And this innovative accessible biosecurity training is a key part of that. Um, and so again, integration across all of the activities of the, the bioindustrial ecosystem. And um, so that is uh, the end of the slides I have. Any questions? On, on Biomade or bioindustrial manufacturing. Oh, hey, and thank you. Thanks, Krista, for the opportunity. Let's see, Let me, uh, stop my share. <laughs>